Debbie Marcou is licensed by the Department of Business Oversight under the California Residential Mortgage Lender Act, NMLS ID 237926. Also licensed in Arizona, 0941504, Florida, 76508, Georgia, 69178, Illinois, 031.0058339, Nevada, 57237, Oregon, Tennessee, 184373, Texas, Washington, 237926. Heidi Cycle Points, DBO, 1666881, Arizona, 101648. She's a mortgage mom. She can get things done. When you're in need and don't know where to go, pick up the phone and call mom. All right. Well, welcome to Mortgage Mom Radio. I'm Debbie Marcoux, and this is my homebuyer workshop. And a couple of weeks back on the radio, I promised I was going to do one entire workshop, all brand new, make sure that it's all completely up to date for 2021. The last workshops that I did were at the beginning of 2019, so quite a bit has changed. But I decided, you know what, a three, four hour seminar workshop, webinar, whatever you want to call it, that's pretty difficult to try to sit through. So I'm going to actually break it up into pieces and I'm going to do one piece at a time. We're going to start from the beginning. Some of the information is the same. Things like terms don't change over time, but then we're going to get through everything. And this course is going to take you. So if you come week to week, every single week for the next six, seven, eight, nine, ten weeks, however long that it takes us to get through every part of the process, you will actually see a new workshop with all of that information. If you think that this is uh, really great, you love the information, you want to continue to follow, continue to watch, please subscribe to the channel. It makes a huge difference for me. The algorithm is there, gets more people watching. Please like the video and make sure that you guys do click on that notification button. That is going to let you know when I've uploaded the next part two, part three, part four. So we're going to get you through all of it. But this is a new 2021, making sure that we're up to date with everything. Again, some of this is going to be very similar to workshops from the past. Things don't really change very often. And some of this is going to be brand new because guidelines do change and we are in 2021 and things are a little crazy. So um, we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. And if you have any questions whatsoever, always feel free to reach out. How do you guys do that? Give me a call. You check the podcast. You um, check get get on the phone app, and we're going to go through all of that with you. But you can always reach us at the office eight four four nine three five three six three four. So let's go ahead and get started, and uh, we'll go from there. Not working, Matt. Not working, Matt. All right. So like I mentioned, the best way to get a hold of us is get the phone app. The phone app is absolutely amazing. It will do everything for you that you that you need. I mean, you can listen to the podcast and old shows. You can go you know, straight to videos on YouTube. You can apply for your loan. You've got a calculator. You can run a calculator and know what that monthly payment is going to be. And it's not just, you know, the, the calculator from Zillow or Redfin or Realtor. Uh, this is this is real. These are real numbers. If you're not putting 20% down payment, there's mortgage insurance. If you're a vet and you're not considered, you know, disabled with the VA of 10% or more, you're going to have uh, to finance your upfront um, funding fee. And, you know, these are all going to get taken into account in this calculator. So very, very important when you're trying to decide where, where do I fit? What is going to be comfortable for me? What price range is going to work that you are actually looking at the correct numbers here in California, not all States, but because I live here, I'm going to refer to California quite a bit. We reassess based on your sales price. So 99% of the time in a rising prices environment where homes are appreciating in value, your real estate taxes are going to be more expensive than the taxes from the seller. So if you are using a calculation from online, uh, they're going to use the current seller's taxes, and that's not going to give you a real representation of what that monthly payment would be that you should be counting on and working on and budgeting with. So text the word mom to 36260. You're going to put 36260 in as the actual telephone number. And then you're going to just put mom and you're going to get a link to our phone app. Go ahead and click on that link, save it to your home screen, and you are good to go. Again, you guys can watch the videos. You can go do your calculators. You can listen to the podcast. You can, there's even an affordability calculator. So if you're a little bit, you know, shy, 
not quite ready to pick up the phone and give me a call and talk to me and start that pre-approval process and you're just kind of trying to figure things out on your own, use the affordability calculator. And the one thing that I can tell you is that 99% of the time, that affordability calculator is pretty conservative. So we're probably going to be able to get you to some higher numbers than what you're going to see from there. But it's a great starting place. It really is. So um, that is the phone app. You can call us from the app. You can email us from the app. You can literally get, you can Anything that you need to do, you can do from that phone app. So that would be the very best way to contact us. Get that you know, calculator on your phone. It is the best tool you could have. At the point that you're out and you're looking at homes or you're surfing the net and you see one that you really like, you can immediately open it up, run the numbers, run the payments, and know whether or not that's something that's going to work for you. If you don't know what to actually plug in to the calculator, you can see the calculator on the screen and it's having you put in your purchase price, how much percentage down are you going to do. It has you put in an interest rate. So if you don't know what rate, send me a quick email from the app. Tell me what you're trying to do and I'll give you a a conservative rate that you can throw in there just for payment purposes. Uh, Taxes, one and a quarter percent is usually the standard tax base. It's kind of the the, the uh, underwriters, mortgage loan officers guide to what they use when they're pre-approving a borrower. So use one and a quarter. If you know that the property has Melarus or special assessments, or you know that the property taxes are lower than that in the you know, area where you live, or you know that they're higher. I mean, Texans, I got to tell you guys, your taxes are really high. Arizona, you guys have great taxes. You're actually pretty low. So again, if you guys want to know what to plug in there, I am here for you. I'm here to help you. Send me an email right from that phone app. Tell me what you're trying to do, where you're trying to buy, and I'll tell you what numbers to plug in there so that you can truly be running numbers to make sure that this is something that is going to be affordable for you. So what do we got next? Here we go. How do you count, contact us? Okay. So we just kind of went through that. We've got our phone app, obviously. Text the word mom to 36260. We are on Facebook. Every Wednesday, we are live at five on Facebook and YouTube. So if you like YouTube, subscribe to the channel. You like Facebook, uh, you guys have to follow us, I think is what it is. You're going to follow the page. Uh, Make sure you put your thumbs up on the page and you'll know when we go live. So those are great ways to contact us. You can always call us. That's the best way. And when you call us, you're going to get an appointment to talk to me. Literally me, directly. I swear, I promise. And if it's not me, it is somebody from my team. You'll talk to Carrie. You'll talk to Larry. You'll talk to Heidi. You've seen all of us on the show. We are all real people, persons doing this for a living. And um, you're going to talk to somebody here. But 99% of the time, you are truly going to talk to me. So give us a call. Matt's going to get you all set up with an appointment. It's 844-935-3634. All right, you've got the contact us. What comes next? Let's see if we can get my pointer to work this time. All right, buzzwords. So this is going to be the name of this week's show is Real Estate Buzzwords. And the reason I say that is, you know, what in the heck are they talking about? And you can see I put that up on the screen. There are so many words that mean things that are mean the same thing and they're using the same words that mean something different. And so we want to get you prepared. The best way to get prepared is to understand the lingo. You start talking to somebody and we all talk in acronyms and we all use words that don't make sense. And, you know, it's if you understand it, you're going to be able to calm down a little bit, relax. Buying a home is a very stressful process. Not only are you going to make the biggest purchase of your life, realistically, most likely, uh, but you are putting money in, you're having to apply for a loan, you're having to qualify, you're having to show us everything about you. We're going to see your bank statements and your pay stubs and your W-2s and sometimes your tax returns and your business tax returns. And if you're self-employed, we might want P&Ls. And we're going to dig and we're going to see everything. So just that piece is stressful. And then on top of that, you got appraisals that are going on and you've got real estate agents that are showing you properties and you've got physical inspections and you have so many things that are happening that if you can understand Every little piece that you understand is just going to bring down the anxiety level, which is going to help you to get through it better and easier. So we're going to jump into buzzwords again. Buzzwords is going to be the name of the game for this show or this workshop or this unit. What do we want to call it, Matt? A unit, 101, 102, I don't know. Well, we're going to call it a unit, Um, but this is going to be for unit one. We're calling it real estate buzzwords, and that's where we're going. So we're going to start with an appraisal. 
what is an appraisal? People get very confused. They've got an appraisal and they have a physical inspection, right? An appraisal is different than a physical inspection. The appraiser works for the bank. That is me. He is working for me. Now, I don't get to select who that appraiser is. We have to make sure that it is an independent third party that is doing the appraisal. Why do we do it? Well, if you want to buy a home for $400,000 and that property is only worth three fifty, dollars what bank wants to lend you money for something that it's not worth? We need to make sure that we're lending you money on a property that we could in turn take it back and get it paid for if we needed to. So that is something very important for you guys to realize that is an appraisal. That is not a physical inspection. The appraiser is going to make sure that health and safety issues are there. The property has what it needs. The property is, the the uh, smoke detectors are in, your carbon monoxide detectors are in, your water heater is, you know, braced for earthquake safety, especially being here in California. Um, if there is no flooring on the ground, we need to have flooring that is health and safety. If there's windows missing or cracked windows, if there is, a, you know, um, stains in the roof, we're going to make sure that that roof isn't leaking. So health and safety issues, that is what that appraiser is looking for. They are not an inspector. So that is something different that you are going to do your uh, your real estate agent once they get you into escrow, get your offer accepted, open escrow, moving forward, the first thing you're going to do with them will be a physical inspection. That is when you're going to actually hire somebody to go through the property and check everything out check that all of the utilities are working right and the appliances are working right and that the plumbing looks good and, you know, the roof is in great shape and, you know, the wiring and everything is good to go on that house. So that is going to be a completely separate thing, two different prices for each and something to keep in mind that you need to have that money available for you on hand at the time that you're looking for a home. Even if we find you a loan that is zero down payment, you still need to get an appraisal and you still want to get your physical inspection. So those are very important. All right. Your closing disclosure, that's going to come at the end of the transaction. We will very many times refer to that as a CD. It is a closing disclosure. This is going to be the final disclosure that you will receive before the loan documents are drawn for you to sign for your loan. So what we're doing is we're confirming for you all of the final loan terms. This is your loan amount. This is your interest rate. This is your APR. Here's all of the fees broken down. Here's the monthly payment. Yes, you want your property taxes and insurance included in it. And that is what your closing disclosure is going to be. You're going to get many estimates throughout the transaction, but the closing disclosure is the one that gets things started. It gets the clock rolling. We cannot legally, by law, close your loan for three business days after you have signed your closing disclosure. And this is on a purchase, on a refinance, owner-occupied property. Those lengths and times are actually longer. So that we'll get into on another day. Um, but we are talking purchases and purchases only today. So your closing disclosure needs to be signed three business days prior to closing the loan. You need to see that. You're going to sign the closing disclosure. Then in three business days, I can then send out your loan documents to sign. And the loan documents will be the final documents that you will sign before we fund the loan. So that is your closing disclosure. Condo review. If you buy a condo, we need to make sure that it is warrantable. We need to make sure that we can finance it. We're going to look at the um, reserves and the budget for the HOA and the community. And you know, there, there's things that are going to go into that. And that's what a condo review is contingency. All right. Contingencies are fun. Um, contingencies are going to be part of your contract that you write with your real estate agent. The contingency periods are for different steps along the way. And there's going to be a different number of days based on what contingency that you're talking about. So you're going to have your initial loan approval contingency. How long are you willing or how long do you need to get your loan approved before you're willing to check mark that off and release it to the seller? So once you say, you know, let's say we do a seven day contingency on loan approval, that means that I have to get your loan approved and through underwriting subject to conditions. 
But you and I are going to go through those conditions together. Know that they are items that we can obtain that we feel very comfortable in doing, such as your homeowner's insurance you know, policy or the appraisal to come in, um, little things. You had a large deposit in your bank account. Where'd that come from? Oh, that was a gift for mom. Okay, cool. So as long as we go through the conditional loan approval and feel very, very comfortable in all of the items that are in that conditional approval, then you would be able to remove contingency on that item, which was the loan contingency. There will also be an appraisal contingency. How long is it going to take for us to get the appraiser out there, get the report back, and get the appraisal underwritten and approved? And what the reason you have a contingency on appraisal is what if your appraisal does come in low? Or what if there are things that do need to be repaired for health and safety that are called out by the appraiser? You need some time to go back to the seller to try to work those things out. So that's going to be another timeline of contingency. You'll have a physical inspection contingency, and we just talked about what your physical inspection is. That way you've got time to get the inspection done, go back to the seller, say you want to get some items repaired, or you want to get a credit for the cost of those repair items that you'll do it on your own. But you've got that time in those contingency timeframes. Once all of your contingencies in your contract have been removed is when your escrow deposit is then basically could be taken by the seller. You could forfeit that if you were to back out of the transaction. So they put the contingencies in place to make sure that you've got the time that you need to get all of the important things done. You've got your loan approved. You've got the appraisal back. You've done your physical inspection. Now you're going to actually remove contingencies and say, I'm in it to win it. I'm going to close this deal. Seller, if I back out, you get to keep my deposit. Um, so that is what contingency is. Very, very important to understand those things. And your real estate agent should be taking you through the contract, all of the different contingency contingency options and all of the different time frames. And you should feel comfortable with that when you write that offer. So DTI. Debt to income ratio, what is that? So your debt to income ratio is all of your debt, including your new housing payment, divided by your income, your gross income. And we use debt to income ratio in figuring out how much that you qualify for. On average, we, you know, normal guidelines will allow up to a 45% debt ratio. But there are loans that will let us go higher. FHA will let us go to 56.9. Some loans will let us go to 49. Some loans will only let us go to 38. So depending on what the loan program is that we decide you belong in, we will have to abide by the debt to income ratio for that underwriting guideline for that loan program. That debt to income ratio, again, is going to be all of your debt plus your housing payment divided by your gross income. Now, if you're self-employed, guys, not your gross income, not your 1099, not what you brought in all year, you're going to be divided by your net. So what did you actually tell Uncle Sam that you made after all of the expenses that you had? So self-employed, you're a little bit different, but that explains your debt to income ratio. Docs. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get you your docs. Um, docs are just your, an abbreviation for your loan documents or any documents that we need. Hey, do you think you could send those docs that I asked you for, Matt? Hey, do you think that, you know, um, we're going to have, you know, loan docs out tomorrow? Hey, could you send me that doc over again that you sent me yesterday? Doc is just a document. You're going to hear that over and over again. It's not the doc to, you know, put your phone on and charge it. Um, but we are talking documents, actual documents. Okay, so let's get into the next thing. This is where it starts to get confusing with escrow because there's two different things with escrow. And I should have, I, I did actually, I was going to say I should have put it on there twice. I did actually put it on there twice. So we've got your escrow. Okay, so in California and other states, there's numerous states that are escrow states. There's other states that are attorney states. And there are some states that are just title states. The end of the day, you always have a neutral third party, depending on where you live, that is working for you. So you've got your attorney working with title. You've got the title company taking instruction. You've got an escrow company taking instruction. I did an entire show with Jennifer Davidson on the YouTube channel that you can go back and you can watch. So look for um, a show that was from, I would say, early December. 
And it was with Jennifer Davidson and it explains all about what escrow is, what's the function of escrow and what do they do. But basically they are the neutral third party that is taking instruction from everybody and making sure that all of the details of the contract are being adhered to. So everything that was agreed upon is what's getting adhered to at this point in time. Um, They take your money, they hold your money you know, in a neutral third party place. They can't give it back to you without getting the seller's permission. The seller can't demand it without getting your permission. So escrow is a really great thing um, to have, but that gets really confusing when you also start talking to your loan officer about your monthly payment and your escrows. So it's totally two different things. In your monthly payment, you have an option to impound your taxes and insurance. You also have an option to not impound your property taxes and insurance. And it does depend on the loan program. So a VA loan, an FHA loan, most government loans are going to require you to be impounds, which mean impounded, which means that you will have escrow as part of your monthly payment. And this has nothing to do with the escrow company that we just talked about. So um, you, if you have at least 10% down or more on a conventional loan, and almost all jumbo loans, uh, will not require that you do impounds. That is your choice. Most people choose to have impounds, which means that their monthly payment is going to include an escrow portion of the payment. So that would be your property taxes and your homeowner's insurance broken down into a monthly amount over a 12, you know, 12 months. So total per year divided by 12, that is going to get added to the principal and interest. And that's what's going to make up your principal interest taxes and insurance, or some people say PITI. So again, difference between escrow, difference between impounds, totally different escrow company, escrow in your payment is whether or not you are impounded or not. So again, it's so much better to understand what all of this is because that could get very, very confusing if you've never been through the process before and you don't understand and somebody starts throwing words at you like you need to send your money to the escrow company and they're going to send you a document to sign, but hey, you're also going to spend $700 a month as your escrow payment with your, you know, you see that on your closing. It's very confusing. So just better to understand what each thing is. FICO, that is the credit score. That is the credit bureaus. We've had credit guys on. Go back and watch George Hartman. Go back and watch our credit cowboy. He talks all about FICO scores. If you want to know more about that, give me a call. I think most people understand what a FICO score is, um, but it is your credit score given to you by the credit bureau, and it is a way that credit scores are determined. FICO is the actual calculator that is being used. All right, HOA, Homeowners Association. Some homes have HOAs, some don't. That is a separate cost. It is not part of your monthly payment to the lender, but it can be a cost for the housing tract that you live in. It can be a cost for your condominium or your townhome. An HOA fee is a homeowner's association fee for your subdivision. Sometimes it's if you're in a condo, it's going to cover water and trash, and it's going to cover the building insurance, uh, all of the ground maintenance. If Sometimes it doesn't include all of those things, but it's definitely going to cover insurance and ground maintenance. If you live in a single family home that is within a homeowner's association, you are you are basically paying to cover all of the ground maintenance and making sure that everybody that lives in your neighborhood is keeping their home in a particular order. So certain colors, no cars on the front yard, um, no trash hanging out. You know, people aren't parking their RVs in front for, you know, two, three weeks at a time or permanently. Um, So in HOA, you can choose to live in an association area or not, but HOA stands for Homeowners Association. All right. HOI or Homeowners Insurance. So as I was talking to you about your principal interest, taxes and insurance, and the escrow part of the payment, including your taxes and insurance. Your HOI is your insurance, your homeowner's insurance. This is not to be confused with mortgage insurance. That we will talk about later. But your homeowner's insurance is different. Homeowner's insurance is what is going to cover your home for fire, theft, sometimes flood, pipe breaks and ruins everything. Um, That is your, somebody slips and falls on your property. That can be a pretty big 
lawsuit. Um, that is what your homeowner's insurance is to cover you for, is for your home. And again, different than your mortgage insurance. So homeowner's insurance will sometimes be referred to as HOI, um, but that is what your homeowner's, sometimes it will be called your fire insurance, sometimes it'll be called hazard insurance, but at the end of the day, it's all the same thing. Hazard insurance, fire insurance, homeowner's insurance. That is your policy. You get to select it. You get to work on it. You get to find it. You get to call your agent, get me a quote, and that is the company that we are going to use for your home. All right, an LO or a loan officer. I am a loan officer. I am an LO. It's one and the same thing. Again, I'm just giving you the acronyms of each. A loan officer is a person who helps borrowers acquire a loan, such as mortgages, from banks or other lending institutions. Loan officers often work directly for the bank or lending institution and can assist in determining the credit worthiness of the borrower. That is the legal definition of a loan officer. Basically, a loan officer um, is going to take your application. They are going to work with you to get your file set up. They're going to get your file submitted to underwriting, and then an underwriter is going to take over and get the loan approved. They're going to work with you throughout the transaction to make sure that they're helping you to collect things that are needed. They're going to price the loan, talk to you about interest rate, go through your fees with you. They're the licensed person that is helping you through the transaction. That is me. I am your loan officer. All right, your LE or your loan estimate. So your loan estimate is going to look very, very similar to the closing disclosure that we talked about that comes out at the end. But this is the upfront initial estimate that your loan officer, your LO, is giving you. They're giving you their best guess of what they anticipate to be the fees for your loan. So you're going to get this loan estimate right up front in your initial disclosures, and you're going to go through this with them so that you have a good understanding of what to expect come the end of the transaction. That is your loan estimate. Now we've got your loan to value or your LTV, and you'll hear people talk about that. Well, you want me to give you an interest rate quote, Matt? What's your LTV? <laughs> All right, LTV is the calculation of your loan amount divided by your sales price. So if you're buying something for 400000 and you are going to put down $80,000, we're going to take four, uh, 320 divided by 400 is going to be an 80% loan to value. So um, we are basically just asking you how much money are you putting down? At the end of the day, are you putting 20% down, 10% down, 5% down, 50% down? That is your loan to value. So you're going to take your loan amount divided by your sales price. If you're doing a refinance, again, I know you guys are listening to this and this is all geared towards purchase, but refinance, your loan to value is what do you owe? How much is the new loan amount that you want? Divided by what is your home worth? What is it going to appraise for? So same exact idea as a purchase, but that is how we come to your loan to value or LTV. All right, Mello Roos. All right, so Mellow Roos is something that is in a lot of newer areas, newer tract housing. I'm going to read for you what the actual words are. It says, the definition is, a form of financing that can be used by cities, counties, and special districts, such as a school district, to finance major improvements and services within the district. So basically, you want to build a new school, and the city or the county is going to go ahead and take a loan for it, and then they're going to pass it on to the homeowners of the brand new area that they just built this brand new school in. So on top of your base county property taxes that you're getting taxed by the assessor, there's going to be a special assessment, which which is called Melarus, that is going to go on top of that base tax rate. So if you are out looking at brand new homes, homes that were built in really 2000, they're usually around for about 20 years. So about 2001 at this point, 2002 and above, you could run into a house that has Melarus, which can make your property taxes more expensive and make the payment more than what you estimated when you first fell in love with the house. And it could change whether you qualify for the property. So you definitely want to be asking your real estate agent as you're out looking at properties, does this home have Melarus? And if so, how much is the Melarus on an annual basis? Then you know to add that amount per month. So if it's $5,000 divided by 12, take that dollar amount per month and add it to the payment that you calculate to know what your complete principal interest taxes and insurance will be. Um, if you have questions about Melarus, again, all of this, any questions that come up as I'm going through all of these things, we want you guys to reach out to us and ask us the questions. Hopefully you heard me earlier. You got the, you downloaded the um, phone app and you can reach out that way. 
You guys can watch Wednesdays live at five. We're on YouTube. You can always ask questions there as we're doing this. This is going to be on Wednesday. You're hearing me Saturday mornings on Go Country. You're listening on YouTube at a later date. There's always a way to get a hold of us. Go to the website, send us an email, give us a call, get on my calendar. You know, anything that you need or you have a question about, we want to hear it from you. Put it in the put it in the feed below, whether you're watching on Facebook, you're watching on YouTube, put your question in the feed. I know that it's there. I'm going to go in, I'm going to answer it for you. So whatever is the easiest way for you to get through to us, you know, feel free to do so. But I, I just want, these are such important things that people don't understand that I want to make sure we're understanding this. And I'm only doing these buzzwords today. Next week, we're going to get into loan programs. What's this? What's that? FHA, USDA, Jumbo, you know, what are all these things? We're going to go through that next week. And then the week after that, we're going to do what are closing costs and how much money do you need? And then we're going to go through how do you get pre-approved? And then how do you find a real estate agent? And then what happens now? I'm in escrow. So we're going to go through all of these different pieces of the puzzle. It's a new year. And we want to make sure that everybody is going to become a homeowner if that was your goal this year. And so we're going to start at the beginning and I'm going to go as many weeks as it takes until we get through the end of this. And you guys can always go back, watch us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification. Every Wednesday, we're live at five. We're going to go through a piece of the workshop. Not only that, but just the workshop's going to get uploaded for you. And, you know, we're, we're here to help in any way that we can. So let's move on to the next piece. We've got mortgage insurance or... PMI. So you're going to hear people say PMI. PMI is mortgage insurance. What is mortgage insurance? Well, I'm going to read you the definition. It says, also known as mortgage guarantee and home loan insurance is an insurance policy which compensates lenders or investors for losses due to the default of a mortgage loan. Mortgage insurance can either be public or private, depending upon the insurer. So FHA has a mortgage insurance premium. They actually call theirs MIP. Conventional loans with less than 20% down payment have private mortgage insurance. But mortgage insurance is basically an insurance policy for the lender. If you put less than 20% down payment, you stop making your housing payment, you go into foreclosure, the lender needs to somehow guard against the losses that they're going to take. Sure, they can take the property back, they can list it for sale, they can sell it, but there's going to be costs associated with doing that. And they need to make sure that they at least get out what they lent you. So that is what mortgage insurance is all about. That is going to be an extra part of your PITI, principal interest taxes insurance. If you have less than 20% down payment, and we're not putting you into a loan that is already uh, specific with no mortgage insurance. And we're going to talk about that in loan programs next week. Um, but if you have mortgage insurance, it is P I T I M I M I M I. It's another piece of the, uh, the, the puzzle. If you're buying a condo or a townhome or a home that's got HOA, it's P I T I M I H O A. So just remember, those are all going to be part of your total monthly nut in buying this home. All right, physical inspection. We went over that already when I talked about appraisal, so I won't drag you through the mud. Processor. So what is the difference between a loan officer and a processor and an underwriter? All right, I'm your loan officer. I'm working with you. I'm like that guy you call, that attorney, and you need to tell me what the real truth is, and we got to figure out how to make your circle fit into a box. That's me. Your processor is going to come into play after I've submitted your loan to the underwriter. The underwriter has approved your loan subject to conditions. The processor is going to work with you and the underwriter directly to collect any remaining items that the underwriter has requested to feel good and fuzzy and warm and put that big check mark on your loan and get the loan funded. So that is who your processor is. On my team, you're going to work with Tiffany. Tiffany is amazing. She is fantastic. And she is, you know, just a wealth of knowledge. I'm always there following along. Heidi is always there following along. Carrie is always there following along. But you've got different people that are do doing different pieces of the process to make it a fine oiled machine and to make it go th through smoothly and to make the process good. So that is who your processor is. All right, let's see if we can get the next page to go. All right, there we go. All right, buzzwords continued. This is our last page and then we are done with this piece. So property taxes, what are property taxes? I think we all kind of have an idea. I'm gonna read the description or yeah, it's description, right? Definition, I'm gonna read the definition uh, so that you actually understand what property taxes are in definition form. It is a levy on property that the owner is required to pay. 
Required, guys. Keep that in mind. Required. It's not optional. The tax is levied by the governing authority of the jurisdiction in which the property is located. It may be paid to a national government, a federated state, a county, or a geographical region, or a municipality. So it depends, obviously, on where you live in the country, how they do their property taxes, who your tax assessor is, where, where does it that bill get paid. But ultimately, you owe your property taxes. If you don't pay your property taxes, they can take your home. They can sell your home at auction um, at the courthouse steps. So you always want to make sure that you are getting those property taxes paid. If you feel that paying that bill one big chunk once a year or twice a year is going to be very difficult for you, then you want to impound those property taxes and have an extra escrow payment as part of your mortgage payment. So your T in the P-I-T-I, principal interest taxes insurance. So that is what your property taxes are. You want to make sure that you know how you're going to cover those. All right, real estate agent versus a realtor. And I get this a lot. Some people are like, I'm a realtor. <laughs> and I love it. I, and I think it's great. So I just wanted to kind of touch on that really quick because I think you'll hear it, especially when you're trying to decide who you're going to work with. That might be one of the items that somebody's pitching. Hey, I'm really great because I'm a realtor. I'm not just a real estate agent. So a real estate agent who is a member of the National Association of Realtors, which means that he or she must uphold the standards of the association and its code of ethics. Brokers can work alone or they can hire agents to work for them. Real estate salesperson, another name for a real estate agent. So anybody that has a real estate agent, real estate salesperson's license is considered a real estate agent. If they are or a broker is part of, a member of the National Association of Realtors, then they can actually call themselves a realtor. So just so that you understand what those differences are, um, if they are a member, they do have to uphold different standards and ethics, which I think is a very good thing. And I think that that would be something important to be looking for when making that decision of who do I want to work with? Who do I want to represent me? All right, last two. We're down to two and we're done for today. So title report or we call it a prelim. You'll call me up and I'll say, well, I don't have your prelim back yet. I don't have your title report back. What is that? All right. So your title report, a title report is made um, when the report is ordered is called a preliminary report or a prelim at the time of recording and up to the date the report is issued, which is the final title report. So that gets kind of confusing in definition, right? Basically what it is, is that we need to get title insurance for you. If I do a loan for you, against your property. I need to make sure that there are no other liens in my way. I need to be the first person in lien position so that if you do default, I'm going to get my money back. So I am going to order a title report or a preliminary title report from a title company who will do the insurance. So again, we had a title insurance agent on. We had Joe Pena on a couple weeks, uh, I want to say into November, right, Matt? It was early November, I think, right? Um, but we had Joe Pena on and he talked all about what title insurance is and why you have to have it and why you have to pay for it. So something very important, go back again, watch the YouTube. They're all there. Look for Joe Pena, look for title report. You'll find the show that we did, but we do need to have title insurance on every single loan that we do and for your property. And we're making sure that there are no other outstanding liens or judgments against the home uh, so that we can take first position. The title report is going to show me everything about your home from property taxes. If you're a manufactured property, it's going to show me that you did all of the paperwork um, to get your HUD tags. It's going to show me if you're delinquent on property taxes. It's going to show me if you have any IRS liens or any other uh, you know, mechanics liens that are against the property. If you have a second mortgage, even if something doesn't show on your credit report, if it's there and it's tied to your home, we're going to see it and we're going to find it. And then we're going to clear all of that up throughout the transaction. And then we're going to go ahead and close the loan. And now you've got clear title and title insurance. So that is what a title report is or a preliminary title report. It is a, a title insurance company pulling all of the information that they possibly can for us and showing it to us on paper so that we understand what we're working with. All right, 
last one, and I don't think that I really need to delve into this one much. We had John Olkowski on. Um, I want to say he was probably from uh, late October, maybe right before holiday, maybe early November. Uh, Halloween, I'm sorry, uh, maybe early November, but I think he was before Halloween. So you might want to go back to about October in our in our shows. Um, but John was our underwriter that we had on. Your underwriter is the one that is actually going through your file, looking at your income, your pay stubs, your tax returns, your W-2s, everything about you. Oh, and Matt just moved our screen. He's going to fix it right now. Not a big deal. Um, but he, um, the underwriter is the one that is going to give you the stamp of approval to be able to, look at Matt's having all kinds of fun, all kinds of fun with this <laughs> PowerPoint. Totally good. Everybody knows that I'm doing this. I'm doing it live. I'm a real person. There's no double takes. Sorry, getting through it one time and moving on. Um, but your underwriter is the one who is ultimately going to say, yes, you can have your loan. And they are very busy and they are great. Um, there's a lot of things you know, about underwriters that are amazing. Wealth of knowledge. I would absolutely tell you if you not you know, want to know a little bit more about their workload, what they do. You've thought in your mind before, hey, I might want to get in the mortgage industry. Maybe I want to be an underwriter. Uh, go back and watch our show that we did with our underwriter, John. He was amazing. But in short, I package your loan, your loan officer. I hand it in to my underwriter. My underwriter reviews it and approves it, says, hey, conditionally, you know, as long as you get me this, I will go ahead and approve this loan. The loan goes to then to your processor, who is my Tiffany, and Tiffany then collects everything that John wants, sends it back to John, John puts a stamp of approval, and then we move over to our closing department. So lots of other moving parts and pieces in between, and that's what this is going to be all about. So remember, if you enjoyed this, you guys liked it, you felt like this was valuable information, please give me a thumbs up, please subscribe to the channel, please turn on the notifications. It really, really helps me quite a bit. I'm going to keep bringing all of this information to you free. It's going to take us probably eight to 10 weeks to get through the entire um, PowerPoint, the entire workshop, start to finish. And I'm going to keep doing it and bringing it to you. So again, you guys can watch us Wednesdays live at five on YouTube. And you're going to see each piece for the next however many weeks it takes us. We're going to upload just this piece that I did right now and each week to YouTube. So if you subscribe to the channel and you turn on the notifications every time we upload the next webinar, you're going to know it's there and you can go in and watch real quick. And, um, you know, we just, we love that you guys follow and thank you so much for your time. If you have questions, you give us a call, you call our office, it's 844 935 3634. If you haven't already, make sure you download that phone app. Text the word mom to 36260. If you tuned in late into the show, go back to the beginning, learn about the phone app. It's amazing. And um, we, we hope that you guys are loving this. So we'll be back next week. We're going into, I believe, let, let's see what next week is. Matt already pulled us through. So we're going to benefits of homeownership. It's going to be next week. Why do you want to be a homeowner? Why do you want to buy a home? What are the benefits? We're going to go through that next week. Then the week after that, we're going to get into loan programs. So I think I kind of jumped ahead a little bit earlier in the show. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy it. Please call us 844-935-3634. Join us on Facebook and YouTube live Wednesdays at five. Ask your questions. We are there. We're watching it. We're putting it on. We're streaming. We're going to talk about it. We're going to banter. We're going to have a good time and we'll see you guys next week.